Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Packet of Preschool and I'm super duper excited you are here with me tonight. Just like every other night, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kinda walk you around my art center, kinda tell you about it, and then we're gonna sit down and chat uh, about all things for the art center. So feel free to pop questions in and I'll answer them as I go. If I don't see it once, pop it in again and I'll try and answer it the second time. Real quick, before um, I start, I want you to pop in the comments do you have an art center in your classroom? And if you do, do you have paint? Like, what's your, what do you have in your art center? What are some of your, like your top three things in your art center? So that way we can kind of start talking to each other too. So what I'm gonna do is flip the camera around and then I'm going to um, show you the art center. Is the art center in my classroom. So see this table? I, we're gonna sit and chat and I have stuff I wanna tell you about. So just kind of like ignore that. <laughs> um, but that's normally the table that my kids do the art activities at. So at the back, I have the easels and then the display and then a shelf. And then I have another shelf over there. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys around and show you all the goodness. So one thing that's super important in art is like a way to display kids art. And um, I've done it different ways in the past, but, um, oh, and if you want this, these, I just made these, I took a, um, one letter per page in um, PowerPoint and then I just blew it up super big and I can put in the tutorial in a minute but um, or after I'm live after I'm done going live but um, I just hung a ribbon and it's just in the wall on a staple and then I use these little clothespins that way I can change out the kiddos art easily and quickly um, but yeah, that way it's super easy, super fast. I can change it out as they need it. Sometimes you know how they random say, randomly say, oh, I wanna take that home. I can just pop it off the wall and they can take it home. It makes it easy to change it out and stay current um, with kind of what we're doing. We, um, on the first day of school, we went to the art center and everybody made a piece of art. So we already have art up on the wall. So this is kind of our first week of school art. Um, so yeah, so whatever way you do, whether you do um, the frames or maybe you just um, have like a display, make sure you have kiddos art up on the wall, super important. And then I have my easels. So these easels are from Ikea. And the reason why I have them side by side is so the kiddos can talk to each other while they're painting. So, um, you know, Sally can talk to Billy and they can share the paint. So I'm also kind of embedding some social emotional because um, they have to share the paint and talk to each other. So they'll have to be like, oh, hey, Billy, can I have the green paint? And they can trade and share and talk and they can talk about their art. They can look at each other's art um, as they're creating. And I don't know about you, but some of my three-year-olds that come in are super short. So what I do is this is just a bulletin board strip laminated and I just kind of tape it to the side and then I taped it to this side. That way they can hang their paper on here because they can never really reach the top, but that way they can be independent at the easel and they can just clip their paper right on there. And then I just take a shower curtain and from like the dollar store and I cover um, this top part with it. That way it's super easy to clean um, and, and yeah, it's just kind of easier. And sometimes um, in my full day classroom, I had my easels up against the wall and sometimes we would get paint on the wall. I actually would put a clear shower curtain. Um, I stapled it to the wall too. So if we painted and you know how sometimes red randomly doesn't come out or blue, um, that way it wouldn't get on the wall. And I know some people put the sh a little piece of shower curtain under their easels too. Um, so yeah, and then the paint cups. And what I do for my paint cups is these are just some that I have that have the lids on them and then the paint cup in the bottom. And this is just a, whoops, a baggie I just put in it. Um, and then I change out my paints every week or every other week, depending on how much they're used. Um, but at least if I don't change out the actual paint on the inside, I do wash the brushes every Friday and they really don't get that bad. I know some people change them out every day. And I just don't, unless they get gross or like the colors get mixed or, you know, the, you know how sometimes paint, like especially the yellow, I'll just wash like one brush if I need to. 
Um, but that way I save paint and it's less for me to do and it's not really hurting anything. If it's kind of like a control thing, I think. And I just like let it go. <laughs> like if it gets messy, it gets messy. If the paint cap is all messy, it's fine. I don't care. It's their place. And if it's messy, that just means they're using it. Um, and it'll show parents that they're using it too. So this is just a plastic baggie. And then I just squirt the paint on the inside and we're ready to go. And then this is my easel routine. You can get this for free in my TBT store. There's a big one and a smaller one. But that way, it's a visual to help kiddos um, know what to do with the easel. So they get a smock, get their paper, write their name, create, and then put it on the drying rack. But, so that way, um, they can hopefully be independent at the easel and it's not me doing everything for them. Because why do things for them when they're very capable? Um, so yeah, so that's just the easel visual routine because I teach it the, um, the second week of school, which I will actually teach on Monday um, with the book, which is at my circle area right now. I ain't going to paint no more. It's the best book ever. We do a whole circle time on the art easel routine and how to use the easel. Um, so yeah, that way kiddos can use it independently. And then the next thing I think is super important for the art center is to have items that the kiddos can use at all times. Like it's not like a teacher shelf, like it's an art center and the kiddos can use everything on the shelf. Um, Melissa, the, these, um, Melissa's asking what size Ziploc baggies are. These are just sandwich Ziploc baggies and they're the fold over top ones, like the super cheap ones. So in my art center, I have a label on the shelf and then I have a label on the tub and these labels are in my Teachers Pay Teacher store and they're all real photographs. So I have dot markers, and then I have tissue paper. And some of these are those squares you buy from the dollar store, and I, honestly, it's cheaper and easier for me to just buy like a thing of um, tissue paper from the dollar store and just cut it up myself. Because <laughs> um, tearing those squares apart takes some time. And then I have scissors, and if you have lefties, you can get lefty scissors, but I also always like to have these loop scissors, that way my three-year-olds um, can use scissors because they just kind of bounce back open and then also some of my scissors you see have tape on them and I just it helps them remember that the, um, the tape goes to the ceiling so that way they're cutting up and I have a whole Facebook live on scissor skills if you want to check that out the link is at the very very top of this post and then I have shapes and these are paper shapes and those foam shapes that you can buy so it's kind of a mixture I keep um, leftover crafts um, or like projects we do or I'll just sit and cut shapes out of um, scrap paper that's left and then I have stencils and then masking tape because kiddos love tape and it's amazing fine motor and then I have paper letters to add some literacy and then I have paper punches which are great for fine motor these are, can, you can find at Michael's. Um, some people are telling me they're harder to find at Michael's. So these are just like, the, they're, a Fis, they're the Fiskars brand. Um, but I know there's other brands too. But they're just paper punches and they love, love these things. Um, loop scissors are from Amazon. If you go to the top of this post, um, you'll find all my favorite things on Amazon. I think they're there. If not, I will drop a link um, at the end of this. Um, for the loop scissors, yeah, they're on Amazon and they're awesome. And they, they're a good quality scissor too, like they won't like break after a year. Because those dollar store ones, I, I think they're, they break <laughs> really easy, at least for me anyway. And then I have paper, and these are just those cheapo plastic paper things, like paper um, holders. So construction paper. And if, I know some people say their kiddos use a lot of paper at a time. Or um, maybe like if you have a three year old class especially. Just cut your paper in half and just have half sheets if they're using a lot of paper and you're going through a lot of paper. Just cut them until they, there's just half sheets for every color. And then you can put like red and pink and then orange and brown. Just do one on each side. And then I have these little buckets. That way they can just easily put them at the table. And I have markers and crayons and glue and pencils. And then books. You got to have books. These are just some of our favorites. And then the art rack, which um, is from Lakeshore. You can see our projects from um, today. And then I have, um, this is actually from, the, the other side is in my library center, 
but I have these name cards in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store. They're a freebie. On one side is uppercase, and on the other side is lowercase. Um, that way my three-year-olds can, um, we can start writing their name in uppercase. <coughs> and then later, my pre-K kiddos will start doing their name in lowercase. And I do have permission to show these photos, just so you know. Um, but yeah, but that way if they're doing a project and they're writing their name, I can get this out really easily or they can, and they can put it on the table and they can use this as a guide to help them write their name. And then they can easily put it back or maybe they're making an art project for their friend. So that way it's a really nice um, way um, or a support for them to write their name in the art center. And then that's my art easel paint, um, scrap paper. And if, if nobody uses this, this is the paper I use to cut shapes with and throw it in there. And then I have old caps, the or extra lids and old markers, which my sign fell off. These, this is a, the best thing ever. Like literally this morning, somebody couldn't find a, um, a, a glue cap and my kiddo that was with me last year just came over here, got one, and it was done in like two seconds. We didn't spend like hours looking for a cap. So this is the best thing ever. These are on my blog as a freebie. It will save you so much time. And you can see there's like dry erase ones in there. And then eventually when it's super full, I just keep them and we can use them for STEM or um, art projects or whatever, or, or counting. And then I have art smacks. And then I have sensory bottles, just one for each color. And then trays, I know everybody's gonna ask me. So these are from Amazon, the link is at the top of this post. So those are smaller. And then I have these, these are the Target dollar spot ones and they're bigger. You can also get them at Lakeshore. Those are great, especially for stuff that like you kind of need like a lips. Like there's a um, like a little lip, so that way the stuff doesn't kind of fly out on you. And for bigger projects, those are great. And then I have just a bucket of Play-Doh supplies. Um, these are rubber, those silicone um, cupcake molds. They love these for Play-Doh, and I just got these at Walmart. And then these tiny rolling pins are from Walmart. They're great because they you can they fit on the trays perfectly. And then tissues. <laughs> Gotta have tissues. <laughs> and then. I always have a Play-Doh tray for um, almost every theme. <coughs> and if you go to my blog, um, every theme on my blog, I usually have a Play-Doh tray idea for you. Um, and so this one, we're doing the school theme. This is, I'm putting this out next week. And I just have some mini erasers and just some shapes and then some letter, just some letter tiles. And then I haven't had time to make Play-Doh yet. So I always have like a case of Play-Doh like as a backup. And I just put out four of these. And if they mix them, they mix them. If they don't, they don't. It's kind of whatever works for them. Um, so yeah, and then there is an empty spot right here. And this is every week. And I'm actually gonna walk over here and mess up the camera and start chatting. <coughs> There's an empty spot on my art shelf. And that is for, I usually do a, um, a open-ended project um, kind of every week in the art center. Now it's their choice. They can do it or they don't have to. So maybe we're doing fall and like it's apple rolling. So I would have the box over there with the apples and the paint cups or whatever it is. And I would have that in that spot. That way they can get it out and they can do it at the table if they want to. They don't have to, but it's, some, it's a new project every week. Or maybe I have spin art out. So I have the circle paper and the salad spinners and the little paint squirters. Um, or maybe, we're just doing um, rectangle and shape, um, rectangle and square collages. So I would just have a basket of rectangles and a basket of squares over there. So it's kind of my spot for the, um, the open-ended art activity for each week. The new stuff I put in, it's not, I don't do a lot of really crafty things. Um, if I do a crafty thing, like here's our birds, um, it's like all the paper plate crafts and things like that. I do a lot of these. I'll use these for small group because it's kind of, it's, I think crafts is more of a following directions activity or a cutting activity rather than an actual art activity. Um, and that's just my opinion. So if it's, if yours is different, that's okay. And I think it's okay to have like a good, I think it's a good thing to have a mix of some crafts and um, open-ended art. I think having just open-ended art, then the, um, sometimes parents don't get these like cutesy things that they get to keep forever that, 
And for some reason, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but the, the, this is what parents want because it looks cute on the fridge. <laughs> um, and as a parent, sometimes some of the stuff my kiddos would make in art and I'm like, wow, this is great. And it, I don't know what it is. It's like a hot mess, but I love it. As a teacher, I love it. So I think it's a good mix to have some cutesy crafts and, um, but probably, probably do mostly open-ended art. Um, but yeah, so, cause when you do open-ended art, um, like for example, I always just have the things behind me. They're always out. They, the, these shelves back here behind me, they don't change really ever. Um, like one little pre-K kiddo, um, last year made this turtle just with the green construction paper. Like how cute is that? And then a three-year-old who loves to cut, just cut up some paper and made this, <laughs> which I love this too. But look at all of that he glued. And I mean, this took a lot of time. It took a lot of thought and creativity. And this is just, this is more work, more creative thinking, more problem solving than this. So just think about that when you're trying to think about, am I gonna do a craft this week or am I gonna do an open-ended art? So kind of have a mixture of both. Okay, just, just my thought on that. So what are some things, oh, one more thing. So when I have the stuff over there, sometimes it's kind of big. So I love using like these dollar store trays. Um, like I think they're chip and dip trays to put this, the materials in. Um, I also love, and like, I think this is in like the party section. These little clear bowls are perfect for putting little things in. And then this is just like a, like a, like a Rubbermaid, like a cheapo dollar store one, but just a Rubbermaid. These are great to kind of put little, op um, your project stuff in. Yeah. So yeah, that's just, um, some ideas on how to like put it over there. It does and it doesn't have to be fancy. Like today we did the meat collages, which you saw on the drying rack. And in the middle of the table, I just used this one's from the dollar store too. I have, I put out foam shapes and this we did for um, table time, but I put the foam shapes out and these are just little squares I cut up. And then these are itty bitty, itty bitty tissue squares and to decorate their me collage. So yeah, so you can just put this tray out if you're doing collage and then like this tray, I'll probably put out next week on the over there just so they have this as an option for next week. So yeah, so that's just kind of a, um, I guess more of an organizational tip for the art center. So let's talk about um, ideas that you can put in the art center to kind of last you through the whole year. So when, when you think about the art center, everybody thinks about paint and coloring and crafts. So I, I challenge you this year to think about not just using paper, try using paper towels to paint on or um, do um, the water drips on or to color on or to you know color on with a marker and then spray with water. So try using other things besides paper. Try using wax paper or try using parchment paper. Try painting on foil. Try collage, doing collage on foil. Use foil and crumble it up and make sculptures with it. So try, you know, just think out, outside of the box and try, you know, using different medias to paint on. Um, I know everybody uses newspaper during like an Earth Day theme or a trash recycling theme. It's great to cut out. Um, it's fun to watercolor on. Um, so think about using um, newspapers if, 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 you, if anybody even gets them anymore, <laughs> right? So yeah, and then painting. Instead of just using your typical um, paint brushes. Ooh, somebody said the huge coffee filters. So I, I, haven't, I haven't bought any of the huge coffee filters yet, but they look amazing. Um, I don't have any because I haven't bought them. I usually just buy the cheapo ones at the dollar store. <coughs> yeah, so the coffee filters are another great media you um, can paint on. Oh, and if you paint on foil, the trick is to put a little bit of dish soap, like two or three drops of dish soap in your paint, and then it'll stick better to the foil. Just a little tip. Um, but instead of using just regular paint brushes, try mixing it up. Use, these are some from Crayola. I want to say these are from like Michael's. Um, I probably used my 40% off coupon um, to buy them. But these are, try using different little brushes that have different um, amounts of bristle, bristles. <laughs> um, you can use foam brushes to paint. We use a lot of foam brushes when we're painting boxes for pretend. 
um, try painting with like a real paintbrushes. These are from the dollar store. Um, you can paint with Q-tips. You can paint with toothbrushes. You can paint with, I think these are from Ikea. These are, I love these, these are super soft. Um, but try painting with just all kinds of different brushes. You know, paint with sponges, paint with, these are from the dollar store, those like shower things, so you can paint with these. Um, when you're doing marble painting, instead of just putting marbles in, like we do apple rolling paintings in the fall. Those are really fun. Put an apple in and they can roll the apple around and paint with the apple. Put these in for, um, instead of using marbles for marble painting. Um, use, um, I've used Easter eggs before because they're kind of like an oval, like a wobbly oval. I just put um, a couple marbles in for some weight and then roll those around. So kind of think outside the box. It doesn't have to be your same old, same old every year. Um, yeah, so, and then when you're thinking about like media, you know, you have your crayons, but try using um, multicultural crayons and doing self-portraits and putting out mirrors and looking at everyone's skin tones. And this is, these are like the multicultural pack. And then I've also kept just all the different shades like skin tone color shades, because there's actually a ton of skin color shades in a regular box of crayons. So don't think, just because you don't buy this box of crayons, <laughs> sorry, somebody was trying to call me. Um, like these are from a regular box of crayons. Like one of those big boxes, like the 94 packs or whatever. But these are just from a regular box. So you don't have to get the big, the fancy, expensive, multicultural crayons. Well, okay, sorry. They're not expensive. They're $2.99. But still. <laughs> um, but you don't have to get those. Just you grab the crayons from your box of crayons that you have. And um, you can make your own multicultural crayon pack when you're doing self-portraits. Um, use glitter crayons and use metallic crayons. These, um, Michaels has a lot of fun crayons that are kind of different than your typical ones. And that you can just use your 40% off coupon. Um, yeah, and then the oil pastels and you can do oil, they have neon ones now that are really fun. Um, you know, try um, <clears throat> doing the oil pastel with the watercolors um, or just oil pastels, maybe oil pastels and tempera paint. Um, would be a fun mixture too. So speaking of temper paint, so you have, the, you know, your traditional paint and everybody always wants to know how I store it. So I, like a lot of teachers, put them in these, what are these, like food? Like I think I got them at Sam's. But so I didn't get the ones with lids. So I had to cut toothpicks and I put them in there. Otherwise it, it dries out at the top. Um, so if you buy these for your art, because it's really easy, you can just squirt a little bit on, like, you know, on a paper plate if you're doing stuff or in a bowl. Um, it, it makes it really easy because I have the big jugs of paint. Um, it makes it really easy for, and the kiddos can use these too once they get used to it, no big deal. Um, but just buy the ones with the lids. Don't be like me and have this weird toothpick thing. But if you do, it's okay too. Um, and then I, ha I also have some fun um, colorations. Wait, I think this is Discount School Supply, right? Discount School Supply has a whole bunch of fun paints and like, um, you know, try neon paints. These are from Michaels, I think. Um, I bought like a little pack to try out. You know, try getting like silver and gold paint. Um, you can get the liquid watercolors. I finally splurged because they're out, let's face it, they're like outrageously expensive, right? Um, I finally splurged and bought some two years ago and this is how much I've used. Like not much. Like if you buy a pack, you'll probably have them for like, five to 10 years because you, it, it, it does not take much at all. And you, it, you can use it to dye sensory table things like rice and noodles, and you can use it um, to make Play-Doh. Like that's how I made my black Play-Doh. Um, when I did space last year, I used the liquid watercolor. So yeah, so liquid watercolors are really fun. You can make your own watercolors and you can do color mixing. Um, and obviously just, you can tell you about this on sale. <laughs> so after all the school stuff is, um, when the school stuff goes on sale, hit up Target and Office Max because they will have all of their Crayola stuff on sale. Like I got these Crayola paints that look, look for $2.28, <laughs> so half price. Um, so yeah, so you can just use regular um, watercolors too. Um, so yeah, what else? So another, ooh, you know what else I love in the art center? And you guys are gonna think I'm silly. It's crepe paper. It's super easy to cut and you can tear it. 
So if your kiddos are struggling with cutting, put out crepe paper and you can get it at the dollar store and they can tear it because tearing is actually um, a great skill to practice because you're using those same muscles um, as you're using your pincer muscles when you're tearing. And it's also really fun to use um, to make collages with or um, you can like put water on it and it just, it's, it does that like, um, I don't know, so somebody had a Facebook video, they did the crepe paper and then they like sprayed it with water and then it like, you let it sit and then it like bleeds and the color bleeds on it. Um, so yeah, so crepe paper is really fun or if you're doing the birthday party theme, you can do a crepe paper collage. So, and it's really nice, it's easy to cut for those little, little kiddos who are struggling with cutting. Ribbon is really fun too and they can just cut it. Like I bought these ribbons, I think like a long time ago, like over five years ago and I haven't even used that much because it was cheaper for me to go to like Party City or something and buy these ginormous rolls. Um, Cause you, they, you can cut a whole bunch and you can even make a sensory table with this and it's super fun. Just a whole bunch of ribbon because it goes like forever. But just put these out and you can use it. Um, it's easy to cut, they can glue it, all kinds of fun stuff with just some like, what is this, like, it's that curling ribbon you use for wrapping, paper, um, like, presents with. That's a fun kind of out-of-the-box art supply. Um, and then there's paint sticks. So, I, um, I do love me some paint sticks. These are, I think, Quick Paint Sticks, K-W-I-K. And they're just like a temper paint stick, and it dries in like a minute and a half or something. So, yeah. Oh, Mary says if you put it out, the kids will show you what to do with it. And absolutely, if you put out some crepe paper or some ribbon, they'll totally show you what to do with it. I love doing wrapping paper collages for when, when we do our birthday party theme. Just ask parents to donate some wrapping paper and you can put out wrapping paper and then crepe paper and some ribbon and just literally put this in the middle of the table and let them cut and glue until their heart's, heart's content. It's really fun. Or you can do it for Christmas. Um, <coughs> um, Amy said after Christmas um, ribbon is super cheap too and that's also another great idea um, and you can do like the bow stamping um, that's really fun for a birthday party or a Christmas theme as well um, Kim's trying to find the paint sticks and they are on Amazon I will pop the link in after this are the paper punches safe yeah paper punches you can't um, I say this and watch one of my kids will like cut their fingers but they can't, so if the paper's in here, so if you, you have to slide the paper in, and then you, the blade is underneath the paper, so they can't get to it. So yeah, how fun is that? And they're great if you're doing a, a, um, a craft. I have circle ones, different sizes, so I don't have to cut circles anymore. That's also a really, really fun reason to have paper punches so you don't have to cut circles for crap. It's a great reason. <laughs> um, hold on one second. Um, sometimes, oh, and glitter. You guys, I love glitter. <laughs> we have glitter all over my classroom. Mom, Miss Jenny works with me two days a week and she'll tell you she finds glitter all the time everywhere <laughs> between the kiddos wearing glitter and then me using glitter for slime and whatever. But um, yeah, and I... These are from the dollar store. They're just those plastic salt shakers. If we're doing like a birthday theme, I got birthday theme on my mind because that's usually what we do in September. Um, but like put these out at the table and put the glue out and then they can sprinkle um, some glitter on their paper and it's super fun. And if you're worried that they're gonna use too much, just put a little bit of glitter in there. You don't have to fill them up to the top. Um, you can also hot glue some of the holes closed so that way all the holes don't have glitter coming out of them so that way it kind of they, it, it shakes out slower um, and these shakers are from the dollar store and they're plastic so they can't break them or anything like that oh somebody said table salt yes you can put table salt in there you know what else is fun i just thought about this you can also dye salt um, I usually dye it with um, food coloring or I'm sure you could use liquid watercolors to just put some salt in and you can dye it and you can do like sand art, which is really fun. <clears throat> and then I love to do cutting collages. We do lots of cutting in my class. Um, and you know how you have, oh, sometimes you'll do a craft and you have like 
You can tell we did something and we have a whole bunch of extra strips. Well, don't throw these strips away. You can just put them out in a tray and they can cut fringe. Um, they can make bracelets. They can make paper chains with them. You can tell I have birthday party theme on my brain. Um, but they, if you could just put these out, they will have a ball with them. Um, so don't ever throw like your extra scraps away if you're doing like a project or something. You can tell I have two different projects in here. Like here's like some short ones and here's some long ones. Um, so yeah, these are super fun. And you can just put them out and say, we're just gonna cut these, especially for like the three-year-olds or even some of the pre-K kiddos who just haven't um, held scissors a lot. Just put them out and just let them cut and let them glue and they will be happy campers and you will have really cool art projects. You can do like mosaics with them. If you have some older kids and you're putting out um, just rectangles, say, oh, can you put these together like a puzzle? And then you're getting some spatial reasoning in too um, because art has a lot of math because you're doing colors and you're doing lots of shapes and you're doing lots of spatial reasoning and sorting when you're doing art. So yeah, and then I just always have baskets of shapes um, just kind of in baskets. You can tell they're leftover from like a cutting collage we did. That way they can just cut shapes. Cause have you ever noticed like once a kiddo can cut a circle or cut a square, like all of a sudden they left like all they want to do is cut out shapes. So just put out a couple baskets and they can cut their own shapes and make a shape collage with them. And then paint samples are also really fun. Um, but you can also make your own paint samples. So what you do is you just take either in Word, I use PowerPoint just because it's easier. Um, I just make a whole paper and I just make lines across it. And then you can just print it on colored Astro Bright paper and you have your own paint samples. Granted, they're not like, you know, varied um, shades and tones, but they're still all kinds of just little strips. And you can cut them to be like one inch. You can cut them to be like, what is that, like three inches. So different for different um, levels. And then they can make a picture with that. And you would think that's like boring. Like, oh, here, we're gonna cut this and make a picture. And you would be surprised. It, or you could like have this out and then maybe have, have put out some glitter too and they will have a ball. So sometimes it's just, you just gotta spice up your cutting collages a little bit. Um, Jessica says, I love to toss a big paint bottle out and some glue and let them paint. That's really fun too. <coughs> um, somebody dropped a link of um, Henry's Scissors. I love that book. That is a really fun book for cutting. I need to get that one. Um, so speaking of books, since you guys brought it up, I wanna share with you some of my favorite books I love for the Art Center. And this one is called Art. That's it, it's called Art. And you would think it's about like art, like the Art, the art Center <laughs> or making art, but it's about a little boy named Art. It says, this is art, <laughs> and this is his art, and this is his art. So it goes through the book, and this little boy does different kinds of art. So you can tell it looks like watercolor, and then it looks like he does some like splatter painting. And I actually read this to introduce the Art Center, um, or you, one of the books you can use to introduce the Art Center. I use um, You Ain't Gonna Paint No More No More. I love that one too. Um, and he does like zigzag lines. So you can tell he's like colored pencils, and then he does different things like dots. And then at the end, he starts to draw. And then he puts all of his sketches together and makes a really big picture. But if you look, here's all of the stuff he did at the beginning. So that's included in his artwork too. So this is really um, fun for, um, this is really fun um, to talk about all the different things you can do in the art center. And it's kind of like a kid level too, right? It's about a little boy who's making art. So I love this one, art. And Harold and the Purple Crayon, I'm sure you guys know this one. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's about a little man and he draws with his purple crayon. And talks about the importance of drawing at their level. Um, the author of the book. Oh, okay, the author of art. Hold on. Because there's, I don't know which one's the publisher. It's by Patrick McDonald. Patrick McDonald, sorry. <laughs> Art by Patrick McDonald. I love, love, love that book. And then Harold and the Purple Crayon. And then this is a new one. Um, it's called uh, I'm Not Just a Scribble. And it talks about this little guy because how many times do our three-year-olds or our two-year-olds or sometimes 
depending on the level, are um, older than three-year-olds too, are just making scribbles. And it's about this little scribble, and he meets all these different drawings, and um, they like don't want to play with him. But by the end, it's also a book about friendship too. It's really nice how they how he's telling his friends that are just that don't have color that they need color, and he wants to scribble them in. And then by the end, he scribbles them in. So it's really, it's a really cute book. It's a newer one. It's called I'm Not Just a Scribble. And it's the, I think it's really important to tell parents and to tell kiddos that those scribbles are important. It, because scribbles are just a first step in drawing. And if you don't have the first step, you can't get started, right? You can't just go from not doing anything to, you know, drawing people. Like, you have to have the scribble stage. It's an important stage. So I love this book for that. And it's brand new. And then you have like the color mixing books, like, you know, the mix it up. We all love this one about the color mixing. I'm sure everybody knows this one, mix it up. And then Pete the Cat, I love my white shoes. Um, it's a great book about colors. And then this is another new one that I found, um, I think it's a year or two ago. Um, it's called Blue Versus Yellow. And it's about, um, mix blue and yellow and they mix together by the end of the book and how cute is that and yellow talks about all the things that are yellow blue talks about all the things that are blue and then there's some other things like look whoa what happened I think I can't remember if they bump into each other or they like bonk into each other I can't remember I haven't read it in a little bit um, but yeah, it's a super cute book. And then look what happens. They like turn green. So it's a great book about color mixing. So yeah, blue versus yellow. And then you got to do, um, shape books, right? Um, this one is an oldie, but a goodie. It's called the shape of things. Um, I think it might be out of print. I bought, but sometimes Scholastic has this one. Um, <coughs> I think it, I saw it in Scholastic last year. Um, but it's just a great book and it talks about each shape and, but look at these illustrations. Look at all the different shape. It's like very, very detailed. I love it. And then there's patterns at the top and the bottom. And this one, this page is obviously all about a triangle. Um, so this one is the shape of things. And then if you're, you know, painting and making things with like recyclable objects, like with egg cartons and paper towel tubes, or maybe you're doing sculpture, um, not a box is great. Um, this one's also great for the block center, but this little guy, um, he has a box and then you can see here's his box and here's the little rabbit man. And now he's pretending it's a volcano. So it's a really fun book. Um, and this one I got from Scholastic. So you'll have, if you, um, obviously it's hard to buy all these books at once, but watch for this one in Scholastic because I want to say it's like a two or three dollar book or you can use your points. So not a box. Um, yeah, so that one's really fun too. So one other thing I love to do in art, and I will say this is one thing I don't do enough of, um, is look at real artists and have, look at real artists work in your art center. Um, so like look at or or different types of art. So like here's some pointillism paintings. Um and I forgot the name of the author, the famous author who does pointillism. Um and there's some really great board books about the different um kinds of art. There's one on like pointillism and all the different you can tell this is not my area of expertise. Um, it's an area I need to um, get better at. But examining artists is really fun. These are literally Google images that I just printed and put it, I put on um cardstock. And I, I used to have a magnet, um, I had a cap, black metal cabinet in my full day classroom and I would put, I would post these up. So I would, um, now I kind of, sometimes I'll post these at the art easel. If I want to inspire my artists to do different things or maybe I'll put up a real photograph or like if they're doing zoo and they're, they're um, painting, you know, zoo animals, I'll put up a picture of a zoo animal there so they can be inspired to um, paint that. So put out real pictures and you know, pointillism is basically just painting with Q-tips. But I will say when you, if you do pointillism, give them a small paper because a big piece of paper and a little, a bunch of little dots takes forever. <laughs> um, so just give them a little piece of paper, like, like literally like 
two inches. Okay, I'm really bad with spatial awareness. So three inches by three inches. And then they can make a picture um, just like a real artist um, that does pointillism. And then I think it's also important to look at illustrators too. Um, <coughs> Eric Carle is one everybody does. Um, Eric Carle is, we love his books, right? Um, but I bet you haven't, you may not have thought about doing it this way. This is the inside of his book. You know how when you open the book, he has those beautiful, um, right inside, like kind of like the desk jacket or the book jacket, um, kind of like right inside. This is inside of the hungry caterpillar. If you open the book, it's that first page. Um, so look at the artist, but also look sometimes at different pieces of the book, like how fun is that? So you can make the picture and then use like a circle punch and punch holes. This one's from Little Cloud. And I just color copied the inside and put the book at the bottom. Um, so if you're studying an author during like reading, um, study that author for, um, or study their illustrations during or in the art center and kind of take literacy to a new level because the illustrations are really important too, right? And I know um, Todd Parr is another one that's fun to do, like paint um, illustrations like Todd Parr's book because he paints with all those big, bright colors. And what kiddos don't love to paint with big, bright colors, right? Um, but yeah, so I just printed off the um, inside cover and then I put the the actual book cover um, from a Google image in the corner. But you so you can tell this one, he kind of uses different shades of white. And then this one, it looks like he tore paper. This is Polar Bear, Polar Bear, what do you see? Um, and this one is the very, which one is it? The very um, lonely firefly. And it looks like he painted and then he like scraped in them. So that's really fun to do, um, kind of do scrapings. And then um, a, um, a house for a hermit crab also kind of has like scrapings on the inside too. So yeah. So it's another fun thing to do in the art center is to um, examine those books that you're examining in um, during circle time. D d make those illustrations like famous illustrators too. So famous off artists and then look at famous illustrators and try and mimic um, their techniques and what they're doing. And then yeah. Oh, one more thing I love in the art center is slime. So like we literally had this out today and I just keep my slime in like a plastic tub and I just keep it on the shelf, usually by my tissues. And that way if they wanna do slime, they can do slime because it's a great sensory experience. Art is a messy place anyways, why not throw some slime in there? Um, so yeah, and then I also wanted to tell you if you are making Play-Doh and you don't have liquid watercolors, another great way to get beautiful colors is to use these, um, I think it's, what is it? It's like that color gel um, system. So this I got from Michaels and you can use again your coupon. This, this is also at Walmart and you can buy the individual tubes, but like it has like a brown in it, um, but it makes like a really pretty red and they go a really long way. Like here's black um, and they go a really long way too. You can tell I have my food coloring in the top of it. <laughs> so yeah, and it does give you like um, a color kind of system on how to make the different colors if you want to make like a fun color for Play-Doh because I use this for Play-Doh a lot and it's just um, from Michaels or you can buy it on Amazon and it's at Walmart too. Do I ever run out of room at my art table? So sometimes when especially when the projects are big they will run out of room at this table and then right there kind of like about five feet in front of me is um, are our small group and our, like we use them for snack tables. Um, they Sometimes my art area kind of flows over there if they need more room, like like maybe like, you know, if kids are painting or doing the, like the weekly thing that I have out, like maybe they're doing like marble painting or apple rolling painting at this table and somebody else wants to do Play-Doh, sometimes they'll go to the other table just so there's more room. So yeah, so sometimes my art area does linger into another table. Ooh, somebody said Kool-Aid packets are also really fun for Play-Doh. Yes, those are amazing. And Valerie, I do make my own slime. I actually have a Facebook Live on it. Um, if you want to check it out, it's at the top. And I also have um, how I make my slime on my blog. And I make slime with um, water, liquid starch, and glue. That's it. So yeah. Oh, sorry. Can't see. 
Oh, somebody says, can I talk about small groups sometime and choice time sometime? So if you go to the top of this post, I have a whole, I have a year's worth of Facebook Live videos and I have a whole, um, I haven't done small group yet, which I can do, um, but I have done one on my center time and how I manage it. So go to the top for that one and I can add small group um, to the list of to-dos for um, Facebook Lives. How do I introduce the art center? So um, when, and I have a whole blog post about it, if you go to my blog, which is at the top of this link. So basically the first week, of, or the first 10 days of school-ish, um, for center time, instead of everybody just kind of going to centers, what we do is, um, this year I have a small group, so I have nine kiddos, because some days it's just me. Um, we'll all go to the art center and we talk about what the name of the center is and we like whisper it, clap it, shout it. Um, and we talk about what color the, the art center is because I color code my centers because eventually they use clips and there's four clips per center, so four kids per center. And um, so we all are in the art center and we talk about art and we talk about, I, I kind of show them some of the things that are on the shelf and we talk about well, what do we, how do we clean up? How do we know where it goes? And we talk about using the labels to help us put things away. And then we spend about 30 minutes or maybe 20 minutes in the art center. Every, um, all nine of my kids playing in the art center and we might have to use two tables. We actually all fit at one um, this year, um, which is awesome because that way they could see each other's art, see each other's um, process of making their art, and then they can, there's more conversations happening. Um, and when I taught full day, I had 18 kiddos a day, but we had two teachers, and I talk with my hands a lot, sorry. Um, so like I would go to art, and she would go to blocks, and I would introduce blocks, um, or art for 20 minutes. She would introduce um, blocks at the same time as me for 20 minutes, and then we would switch kids at the end of that time. So yeah, so that's kind of how we introduce it. And I do that. My I also have my um, first 10 days lesson plans for you on my blog. You can check that out too. And I totally map it out for you on there. Oh, Jennifer says she introduces her centers too and it makes a huge difference. Yeah, it does. If you take the time, with the, it's just like anything else. If you take the time to teach um, about your centers, just like you teach about your routines, center time, the rest of the year is so much smoother because like let's say they're deciding what center they want to go to and if you just have them go that first day, they're not going to really know what's in the art center. They're not going to really know all the things that are in the discovery center, especially if you change them out a lot. Um, so if you take that time to really introduce your centers at the beginning of the year, they'll really know what's in there. So, so maybe they'll be like, oh, I want to go, like maybe they want to play with Play-Doh, but they can't remember what center it's in. So maybe they'll pick library thinking that the Play-Doh is in library and then they get there and they're like, oh, there's no Play-Doh and they want to change centers and they go back to the board and there's no more art clips. And then, you know, the kiddo's upset and it's just not a good situation and, but if they knew where the, the, that Play-Doh was in the art center or even if they knew that Play-Doh was in the red center, they could pick the red clip and pick the art clip and they would go to the right center to pick what they wanted to play. So yeah. All right. All righty. I, um, each year I just, it depends on the kiddos and kind of where I see honestly where they play the most at open house. Those are the centers I introduce first. <laughs> Open house tells me a lot. That tells me where they like to play because um, that's where they play almost the whole time at open house. So yeah, even though we, I do an open house scavenger hunt, but if wherever they're at most of the time or whatever centers are the busiest, those are the centers I introduce first. So yeah. All righty. All right, so I don't think there's any more questions. So, but if you guys do have questions, feel free to hop um, pop them in the comments, or you can, after we're done talking, you can hop over to the Facebook group, and we can keep talking over there. All right, and if you want to know, I see lots of questions about my center management, so what I want you guys to do is go to the top of this post and watch the Facebook Live on my center management and how I introduce centers, and that will tell you all, all the fun details, okay? Talk to you guys soon. Bye.